Welcome in, everybody. It's the coach. This is Madden 20 on EA Sports. Straight ahead, we've got what should be a good one between the New York Giants and our home team. With that, let's get on up to FedEx Field near Washington. Standing by for the call of this one, Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Okay, Coach, thank you. We are technically five miles east of Washington, D.C. That's where the home of the Washington Redskins resides. FedEx Field in Landover, Maryland. The scene a few moments ago, here it is. It's unlike any other in sport as both teams made their way out of the tunnel. These folks are fired up as their guys are ready to do battle between the New York Giants and our home team. Along with Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gauden. And Charles, you take a look at our home side as we enter play here. They're hitting their stride of late. Winners of three of their last four. On the other side of the field for the visiting Giants, things haven't gone exactly according to plan to this point. But boy, you and I down there with them before the game, they were fired up. And they understand how important this game is. Win this one, they can start to think about a turnaround. two months of the regular season down. What will the final two bring us as we're off in week nine? And they will not get a chance to return Let's this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback. So here are the Giants ready to start their initial drive of the game. And trotting out there, their tall quarterbacks, Danny gets 6-5. It's pretty much become the norm when we see guys come out before a game and go through the route tree with their receivers. I thought it was exciting for us to see the exact same thing happen in practice. He's so, he's so meticulous, isn't he? He really is, and it's not, that tells me it's not just a one-time-a-week thing. They work on it all the time trying to hone that fine edge. They want to see if they can get in sync and stay in sync in this one. Meanwhile, they take a shot to start the drive, but this is going to wind up incomplete. Complete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. Jones going to throw again. It's complete to Golden Tate. And they're able to get this one across the 35. It's a gain of 11 and a giant first down. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Now Jones. And the tip there altered the ball flight, and it falls incomplete. It'll be second down. Time for a look at our starters here on defense. Now, they've been pretty much a mess against the pass number 31 in the league. Theories abound. People have opinions. But too often for this team this season, it's been the big play that's done them in. To throw again, Jones. He's got Lewis. No yardage to speak of whatsoever. Leads to a third down. They tried to swing it out left into the flat, but the defense, they were very principled there. It felt very West Coast offense, didn't it? You know, you know their expression, right? A West Coast offense, when they throw the ball, it's either going to be a touchdown or a check down. I mean, they like to press it downfield if they don't have it, swing it out, which is exactly what we saw there. But how about the great pursuit and tackle to make a nice play? A good pick up there, 26 yards. And on this first drive, looks like they want to get that vertical passing game going early. And they did, and what a warning shot they just fired. If you're not going to back up and play coverage deep, we're going to attack you all game long. And once you adjust to that and you start to back off, then that opens things up underneath. A really nice start for them. Great way to get the game going. We've seen quite a bit of the short passing game here early on first quarter, haven't we? We have, and I think it works a couple of ways for, for this team because, number one, you throw the short game until they stop it. And if they're not going to stop, you keep throwing it, and occasionally you'll break a tackle and turn into a bigger game. Also, if they start to creep up, start to pressure receivers, now you go over to the top, take it deep, and now you get some of those big shots downfield. Here comes the seventh play in this opening drive. They've moved it well, but here's third down. 
Operating from the gun. Jones. Got a man, Slayton. It's a gain of 11 and a giant first down. Nice job keeping that opening drive alive, and they're in plus territory, that part of the field where you really want to convert on third down, they did. Big time pickup for them, and now, I think the aggressive play callers think to themselves, this part of the field, I take my shot at the end zone, because the closer you get to the end zone, the field gets condensed. Makes it a lot tougher to run those routes. You still got a chance to actually run past people right now. Take your shot at the end zone early in the down and distance count. A first carry for the Clemson man, Wayne Gallman. And he's brought down just outside of the 10 at the 11. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. Well, I think that's what they're going to need to do here in the first half. You've got to take some pressure off of this young quarterback, and no better way to do it than to establish the running game early. Now Lewis here on first down. And he can't quite get there. Tackled down at the one. They picked up five yards last time. Now they double it and get 10 here. And that's a run that'll energize an offensive line. They'll take that one all day long. Fundamental breakdown by the defense. You've got to be able to make plays on the edge. Goal line offense, something they've really been emphasizing in practice lately. Now they have a chance here to put all that hard work to use. They go play action here on first down. And that is caught. He's got it for a giant touchdown. Elijah Penny, his first touchdown on the year. And the Giants take it right down and score on the opening drive. PAT up and good by Rosas. And it's now a 7-0 game. That one in the books as a 12-play drive. And it was polished off by a Giants touchdown. This will be taken in at the 1. And he'll take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. So now we'll get a look at the other offensive unit as they come out for their first possession. They are led out by the 15th overall selection in 2019, former Ohio State Buckeye Dwayne Haskins. And you've got to think that they've got to be feeling pretty fresh. You know, coming off of the open week, didn't have to play, right? It gives them a chance to rest up a little bit, heal some of those aches and pains, and excited about playing again. That really rekindles things a little bit. I want to see how they come out and establish themselves here early. And that bye week coming right where they want it in the middle of the schedule. The throw right side is complete here on the first play of the drive. The drive starting play, a good one. Give him 19. Defense gives up a touchdown on the opening drive. Offense, you got to want to get out there and get those points back right now. And that's a sharp throw there to get this drive off to a good start. A big hitter to start the drive has him up near midfield here for first and 10. Now it's AP, Adrian Peterson. And he's going to get this past the 50 and into giant territory. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. The first down run got five. Here's second and five. Second down, Haskins. And he's going to find his man out of the backfield. That's complete. A look at the starters down the defensive side of the ball for the Giants. This unit against the pass, hoping to get better for sure. Number 25 in the NFL right now. They're in the bottom 10 in the league. I mean, when you look at their talent, you would think that they'd be much better. Overall, I don't think there's any question you'd have to say that they've underachieved. This is third and one. Very likely four down territory, even if they don't get it, though. A first carry for the converted wideout, J.D. McKissick. He fights forward for a couple with a penalty flag down. Offense. And the linemen, they're already walking back. That time, the right guard sending him backwards. And so many different types of guys rotate in on the defensive line now, depending on situations. You can get the bulky guy, the fast guy. No matter what, though, he can't hold them. Third down, here's Haskins. And he's unable to haul it in. So it falls incomplete over the middle third of the field. And that brings up fourth. So the defense able to get off the field here on third down. And it's one of the goals of the game. They've got to be effective on passing downs. It's one of the few things defenses chart. How did we do on third down? That's a nice start for them in this one. Two 
And New York set to take the field. They have to be thrilled with that first drive. They got him the touchdown. Now they'll be looking to make it a two-score advantage here on the road. And you know they spent all week in practice in meetings talking about taking an early advantage. Being the road team, going up a score, that takes the crowd out of the game and puts some doubt in the minds of their opponents. And at his size, he's a smaller back. You can get him to football. He can kind of get lost, make someone miss. It's good for him. Yeah, it's great for him. I like what you said there. Sometimes he gets lost in the traffic a little bit. But get him out in the open field into some space. That plays to his strengths the best and keeps him out of it where all the big boys are. You know, make him make someone miss in the open field. After the incompletion, here now, third and two. Here's Jones. Off the play fake. Rush coming, and he's taken down. For a rookie first rounder, he's made a huge impact on this defense, but that tells me that they had a plan for him when they drafted him. Just turn him loose, do what you do best, go get the quarterback. This is fielded at the 27. And he'll go out near midfield at the 49. A great return there of 22 yards. And possession will switch. Hands first and 10. Out comes Washington's offense as they get set to take over here. And still a lot of football to be played in this season. We're only in November. A lot can happen between now and January. But if it ended today, they would just be on the outside of the playoff picture looking in. So a lot to fight for. Yeah, and wasn't it interesting in our meeting with, with the coaching staff that they all made sure to let us know. We know where we are right now, but the playoffs don't start tomorrow. We still got some time, and they plan on putting it together formulating a streak got the whole month of December still left to play they think they can get in and they made it very obvious to us that there's no playoff talk in the locker room right now it's win this game and look to next week excellent focus and that's one of the reasons you like to blitz even on rundowns it confuses the blocking assignments it doesn't allow those offensive linemen to get up to the second level this is third and one very likely four down territory even if they don't get it though they will run it. It's McKissick. And he will have first down yardage as he's brought down at the 41. He needed a yard. That's what he got. And it's going to earn him a new set of downs. On first down, it's Haskins. He'll take his shot for the end zone. And that is caught. Touchdown, Washington. Taylor Gabriel. His second touchdown on the season as his guys are on the board here in this first quarter. And he's a little bit on the shorter side as a receiver. Maybe sometimes for the defense, tough to find the little guys, right? Yeah, sometimes they get lost in the traffic, but usually what it means is that rather than just winning with height or even speed, they use their quickness to find a way to get open. Well, tall, short, wide, skinny, whatever, there it results in a touchdown. Hopkins with the extra point, and we are tied at seven. A drive there of just four plays. So all even at seven now as they kick it away. And the result, a touchdown for Washington. And that'll carry over the back line of the end zone for a touchback. And New York set to take the field. And they're coming off a three and out, my friend. Then they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't gone before. Time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you shake things up? You look at what you called before. <laughs> That's caught inside the 20. It's a big-time play there for the G-man. 56 yards. And now he's really knocking on the door for 700. That is career catch 6-9-9. Line of scrimmage moves from their own 25 all the way to the red zone now for first and 10. Now they'll run with Lewis. And he'll go down here at the 12-yard line. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. And this will probably be the last play of the quarter.
Anthony Pittsburgh. Right here, right here. Patsy, Patsy. Two. Here's Gallman. And this won't be enough to pick up the first. A gain of two, third and one. The Giants on third down. They've been okay, two for three thus far. Here it's third and two. Now Jones, off play action. Under a heavy rush and down he goes. And we talk about players blitzing all the time. I often laugh and sometimes call it just straight ahead pursuit. What a running start right back to the backfield for him. Yeah, he really didn't give anybody a chance to get up there and stop it. No, I mean, that's really, really difficult. You're asking a whole lot anyway, but when he gets that kind of a start and comes through clean, oftentimes the advantage definitely goes to the defensive player. So the drive stalls out inside the 15-yard line, but they do get three. And I've talked with enough players nowadays that when they have these types of kicks, that no one says to their guy, hey, that's just like making an extra point, piece of cake. Because the extra point is not a piece of cake anymore. <laughs> but kicking a field goal from that distance, just give him confidence and let him knock it through. They start the drive with Peterson. And he'll wind up with about six, up past the 30 to the 31. Despite the blitz, they're still able to pick up a nice, solid gain. The disadvantage of blitzing often alters the normal spacing and run fits and leaves creases like they were able to exploit right there. They'll come up now second and four from the 31. On play action, Haskins. Oh, he got position on him, and he pulls it in. And he'll be stopped right at midfield. Pass interference, defense. So even with the pass interference, it's a completed pass. They'll go ahead and just take the play instead. How about the effort? Making the catch despite the pass interference. Nothing else to be gained on the play. No need to take the penalty. The play stands. Following the penalty, it's Peterson. Big winner Williams there on the stop. One thing to keep in mind, partner, especially in the second half, when you've got a running back of this size, of these dimensions, I can just tell you, attrition does set in for a defense because you're excited about hitting him in the first half. Maybe not so much in the second half, and some of these shorter gains turn into bigger runs later. And he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. 12 yards is the pickup, and it's good for a Washington first down. They're making it look easy out there. Another first down. So, so far on this drive, let me do this little bit of math here. Four plays, three first downs. That's a pretty good recipe for success. On first and 10, it's Haskins. Pass incomplete. And his back kind of seized up on him. He was having trouble with his spasms, but the last few days, he said he's felt normal. And that's a good thing because trying to play through back spasms is so difficult. It's hard to even walk, let alone run. So it's nice to see that things calm down for him, and he's going to be able to give it a go. To throw once more on second and 10, Haskins. That's complete to his tight end. This is Lance Kendricks. That one good for a first down pickup of 18 yards. When this offense can get their tight ends involved, they can move the football. Here, a nice route, able to look it in, and picks up the first down. From the red zone now, Haskins on first down. And incomplete, a drop there in the middle third of the field. That'll bring up second down. Right up to that point, I was about to say, he's had a pretty good half catching the football, but let's just be honest about it. He should have caught that one. And he knows that. That was one right in his bread basket and one he normally catches. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. Check 26, check 26. Second and 10 now, Haskins looking for McLaurin and he's got him. And brought down, but not before they get it inside the 10 to the 7. It's a nice pickup of 12 yards, and it gives him a first and goal. That's the number two receiver in the NFL in terms of yardage. And tell you what, a few more plays like that, he won't be number two for long. But well, that's what often happens when you have competitors running around the field. These guys know where they stand in relationship to yardage, totals, numbers, the whole deal. And let's face it, all of them, they all want to be number one. And he takes it in. Touchdown, Washington. Taylor Gabriel. 
His second touchdown of the game, his third on the year. And his guys are going to retake the lead. A nice throw there by the second-year quarterback. And I don't believe that's the kind of play he would have made as a rookie because usually your rookie season is in a continuation of your college days. A lot of one read, and if you don't have it, you just take off and go. Now he's settled in the pocket a little bit more, reading the field and getting to a second and sometimes third progression. That was a nice play. So a nice drive put together there. They go 75 yards in nine plays. And the result, a touchdown for Washington. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. And time to spotlight Golden Tate sitting right around the midpoint of the season on pace for 1,000 yards. Good year so far, and I'm sure film study being devoted to him a little bit more on the other side. They have to because the pace that he's carrying right now, if you're, if you're pushing a 1,000-yard pace as a receiver, that means he warrants your attention. And right now, precision is going on with their offense. It's kind of like that timepiece you wear on your wrist, you know, that good stuff. You gotta knock that off somehow, chip away at that timing, change things up a little bit, and make them go to other things and make them do those things better. Yeah, try to make him uncomfortable. Not many teams have been able to do that so far this year. Not easy being a rookie left tackle in this league, and there they got him for the penalty. Not easy at all. Think about what you're dealing with every game you play. Ostensibly, the best pass rusher is over you on every snap. I'd be a little jumpy myself. Give him two on that run, and they're still left looking at a third and about nine to go. The Giants on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. This is third and nine. Throwing Jones. And Tate's got it. And they work this well upfield across the 45. Catch number 44 of on the year. It's a first down. That reception, it brings him up to the 700 plateau. He's at 700 career NFL catches now. And that club in baseball, a rather exclusive club, and one we talk about all the time in football, puts you in the top 50 all-time range. Not so bad either. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. This is Goldman. He's got a first down and then some inside the 40. And he'll finally be taken down at the 18. 36 yards on the play. This has been a good drive so far. It's been the running game for the most part that's powered them down there. Another nice burst there, picking up a first down. Now it's first and 10, as you said, in the red zone. So on the other side of the field now, it's first and 10 as they've got things rolling on this drive. He's got his man. This is Tate. And able to get him down, but he does reach the five. Another nice gain, 13 yards that time, and another first down. Off play action, Jones. Blitz coming, and down he goes. It's Ryan Kerrigan getting the sack. So first down went in the wrong direction. They're at the 13-yard line. Here's second and goal. Second and 13. That's complete to Slayton. And he's got this inside the 10 to the 9 before he's out of bounds. That time the completion goes for four yards and we're set up with a third and goal. Timing is everything and they work on this cut all the time. They work on all the timing patterns and this time it paid off for them. Worked him to the center of the field, cut it to the outside, ball's delivered, gets both feet down. And he's going to be dropped. Back at the 15-yard line. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. Rosa's kick is good. And we've hit the two-minute mark in this first half of action. And we'll remind you that coming up at halftime, we'll join Jonathan Coachman and the gang in Orlando. Coach will have stats and scores from the early games going on here around the NFL. Just fielded a few yards into the end zone. And this return nets positive as he gets past the 25 and up to the 27-yard line. Out comes this field general once more, leading his offense back onto the field. And he's been good. Two first-half touchdown passes, no interceptions so far. Does a lot for your confidence, does a great deal for your team, 
gives them a lead, and they're feeling really good about how they're playing. I think he expects to throw at least another one. I was going to say, now he wants the first half hat trick, doesn't he? Oh, without a doubt. Go ahead and fling him on the field, folks. He wants that type of celebration. Well, he may want to go back to that one. First play of the drive, good for 15 and a first down. Here's Haskins to throw. Got a man, that's Richie James. And he's able to get this one out closer to midfield across the 45. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. Second and five after the five-yard completion on first down. Here's Haskins. Oh, he dropped it. They were looking for him in the middle third. He couldn't catch it. Now third down. That was a classic example of trying to run with the ball without securing the catch. He was thinking about those rack yards instead of making the catch first and then taking off. They come up now third and five following the incomplete pass. Throwing again, here's Haskins. And that is incomplete. More problems here on third down. They've converted only once so far in this first half. And you know as well as I do in this league, if you don't win on third down, it makes it hard to win a ball game because then you're relying on your defense, relying on your special teams. You've got to get it done with your offensive unit. Give him 11 yards that time on the return. And it'll be giant football first and 10. Now we get a peek at the captain of this offense heading back out there. Been a decent start for him here in this first half, but bottom line, his team's losing. They got to fix something. And it starts with him. He has to keep that little quarterback strut going right now to make sure his team sees him as confident. Continue to try and up his game. But just let them know, hey, if I'm around, if I'm the one calling signals and throwing the football, just follow me, we'll get there. Sometimes that will do more to elevate a team than anything else. See if he has that confidence. Ten Lobo. I got you. I got you, son. I got you, son. Snap. To throw again on second down. Jones. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Now the Giants will use the second of their three timeouts as the clock will stop with 55 seconds to go until halftime. I'm going back to you. Jones now on third down. Finds his tight end, Ingram. And he'll get this up past the 25 before he's out of bounds. They stop him for only three that time, and that'll bring up fourth down. Got to give credit where it's due. Really nice defense on that play. The pitch and catch was successful, but not any run after it. An excellent return that time, 26 yards. And this offense, they're going to have excellent field position. They take over with a first and 10 on the short side of the field. Here again comes the captain of this offense leading his crew back out there now. He's got to be feeling pretty good. Play him well. Team has the lead, so just looking to mount a drive here that ends in the end zone. And all quarterbacks will tell you, hey, we love a running game, helps us out. But at the end of the day, they want to rely on their arm, throw the football, feel good about things, keep things moving in the right direction. Right now, that's exactly what we're seeing. And we'll see if that continues. They're throwing to start the drive, but that one incomplete. After the incomplete pass here now is second and 10. Yeah, he is out of bounds, but not before he's inside the 30. That one good for a first down pickup of 18 yards. Well, that play looks familiar because we saw them working on it in practice this week. And for a lineman trying to block on this play, they love when they get the defense moving in one direction. And when they try and change directions, it's a lot easier to pick them up and ward them off. Haskins will throw. And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. Got out of the pocket. Didn't look like he had anybody open, Charles, so just gets rid of it. And a good play by him. If no one's open and you don't have a running lane that you want to take, make the right choice. Get rid of it. Live to fight another down. To throw on second and 10. Haskins. And this is Latimer. Complete. Now the offense going to use the first of their timeouts as the stoppage will come with 23 seconds to go till halftime. Check, 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 check. Now Haskins on first down. 
Now he's got it. And inside the five here before he's out of bounds right at the three. Give him nine there on the first down completion. That last catch short of the marker by just a yard leaves him with a very manageable second and one. Haskins back to the air. Toward the end zone, but that's going to wind up incomplete. They tried the throw on second down, unsuccessful. Now it's third and one. He may try and run for this. And he won't have the touchdown, but he will have the first down as he's tackled at the two. to look to throw and it's intercepted at the goal line picked up by the Michigan man Jabril Peppers and his guys have got it back at the closing stages of the first half the Giants offense at the line ready to begin their next drive likely time for just one final play and then it'll be off to the locker room to talk about how they can erase this deficit yeah and I think a lot of people look at it and go well maybe you take a shot here maybe you get some momentum going into the half what's the flip side of that you do something crazy quarterback gets hit ball comes free and now you're down an even bigger margin Go ahead and take this one. Go to the locker room. Start over. All right, Brandon, thanks very much. Hi again, everybody. Let's get you caught up with what's going on around the NFL here on this first day of November. We'll get started out at Arrowhead Stadium in Kansas City. And the Panthers are out in front as they play the second quarter. Teddy Bridgewater with a touchdown pass. From there, we head north to Minnesota. Check on the Vikings at home at U.S. Bank Stadium. And they have the lead in that one over the visiting Lions. Tajay Sharp, a touchdown reception. Finally, let's get to the country music capital of the world. See what's happening with the Titans at home in Nashville. And they trail the visiting Chicago Bears. The Bears still in a dogfight, but this would be a good victory for them if they could get it. In our game, it was Dwayne Haskins with a strong first half. He's thrown for close to 200 yards already. And that's helped propel his guys into the lead as we send you back to Brandon God. All right, Coach, thank you. And we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. Both teams appear ready for the fight ahead, and we resume action here in quarter number three. This will be taken in at the one. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. Now, after the running play, we've got a man down on the field. We'll check on his status when we get back. The third quarter strikes with a run by Peterson. He takes this for three to the 29. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, this big defensive lineman will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. The last run got three. Now here's second and seven. They run again with Peterson. And he'll be brought down shy of the 40 at the 38-yard line. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. They're trying to show that they can run the ball and protect this lead. Give it to the backs, play a little bit of keep away, don't you think? And that's probably a good philosophy at this point, going to make that defense stand up and stop them. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. They'll run with McKissick. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. But no matter how they phrase it, staying on schedule, staying ahead of the sticks, whatever you want to call it, seven yards on first down, that fits the bill. They run, Peterson, and taking it across midfield and inside the 45. 12 yards is the pickup, and it's good for a Washington first down. A big hole there. How about him handling the point of attack? Just positioning himself so that run could go right off of his backside and deep into the secondary. 
So the drive takes him into Giants territory now. First and 10 at the 43. A carry now for McKissick. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. 11 more on that one and another first down. They've got the lead early here in the third quarter and runs like that are how they established that lead in the first half. I love the fact that you're using the word lead because they are leading from the front, pounding on the defense right now with the running game and truly establishing themselves here in the second half. Here's McKissick. Working his way for a gain of seven to the 26. And there we saw one of the downsides of blitzing during a rundown because sometimes you get out of your gaps. You don't fit the run quite as well because you're headed towards the ball carrier with abandon. Running the sweep with McLaurin. And he's able to get it to the edge of the red zone at the 20-yard line. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. Looks to me like maybe there's a little attrition setting in with this drive, because when you see that type of a run, I get the feeling the defense getting a little bit tired. And that's the last thing they need, especially when they look up at the scoreboard. First down, here's a run with Peterson. And stopped a few yards shy of the goal line at the three. Now they'll have it first and goal following that gain of 17. Now this is an example of breaking down a defense because on a lot of these runs, he's getting past the point of attack. And guess what he's doing? Forcing the secondary guys to have to make a lot of tackles. Oh, how about this call down near the goal line? And they'll get him down just shy of the goal line at about the one. He'll get two out of that run, and it's going to bring up a second and goal. A lot can go wrong when you call a play like this down in the red zone, but that's where you appreciate this from your head coach. He's not afraid to trust his guys to do the right thing, and as a player, that means an awful lot. They'll try to run this one in, and he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. No gain on the play there. They're going to need to come up with something better here on third and goal. This is third and goal. And this Giants defense, they have withstood the test thus far. And he'll take this into the end zone. Touchdown, Washington. Terry McLaurin, his second touchdown on the season. And his guys find a way to stretch that lead. And that drive we just saw that culminated in a touchdown, exactly what many offenses are looking for sustain ones that can impose their will on the other team. Now it's Hopkins to add the extra point. And with that, the lead is up to eight. So that one a long 11-play drive. And the result, a touchdown for Washington. And this will be a touchback as that sails over the end line. Here's the Giants offense now getting set to start the third quarter. They're down in this game. A chance for the offense, though, to put something on the board, get some momentum here at half two. Try and get things kick-started for them. And you know at the half, they discussed how they were going to get that done. This is where scripting comes into play a lot of the time. How many plays do you script coming out of the most, most of the time in the first half, you're scripting 12 to 16. I think in the second half, you're really scripting more like 8 to 10. Kind of a starter or an opener, whatever, they, whatever terminology they use. Just something to get you off to a quick start. On second and 12, Jones. And a big loss here as he's taken down. That's Deron Payne with a sack that time. This has been a tough one for this offensive line. It appears almost like they've been on roller skates this entire game, the way they've been pushed around. Six sacks given up in this one. After the sack, they'll come up now third and long. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised to see them run the ball here just to try and get some space. Uh, no run call here. They'll look to throw instead. He completes it to Tate. And he'll be a couple yards shy of the 20 at the 18. They get seven there, but it brings up fourth. One hallmark of good defenses is understanding the game, understanding positioning, and tackling immediately in the secondary after catches. I think we just saw that on display right there. Got to him before he ever had a chance to think about turning it upfield. 
A 41-yard punt, nine on the return. And out will come the offense as they take over. A look at Washington as they come onto the field. And it's a unit last drive that did it all on the ground, Charles. And they controlled it from the interior, big on big, right? Offensive lineman versus defensive lineman. But you know, in order to keep the football moving downfield, other people have to get involved as well. Your wide receivers, your tight ends, lead runners, anything that you have possible to get in front and keep the ball moving. Well, now the defense may be looking out for a pass coming up. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. Peterson. Peterson a first down and more. And he's all the way down to the 13-yard line. Give him 18 on the play. Consecutive plays now where that offensive line has really created a lot of space. And we've seen the confidence rise, haven't we? It borders on arrogance now, and that's that good arrogance, believing you can run the football whenever you get good. He rifles one that's intercepted. Picked off inside the five, and he returns it here to his own 18-yard line. As much football as we watch, we've seen this work many times. In the red zone, first down, take a shot at the end zone, and points result. In this case, though, give credit to the defense. They outguessed them, were prepared, and intercepted the pass. Now this one complete downfield on the left side. A good pick up there, eight yards on the first down completion. Facing a second and two after that last catch, good for eight yards. Now Jones, he's going to let one fly for Tate. And that's going to wind up incomplete. However, we do have a flag down. Let's check in with our referee. So they saw the contact before the ball arrived. Penalty flag for pass interference. And trying to avoid pass interference is so difficult. You're trying to slow down these skilled receivers. And somehow, some way, they make plays on the football. And sometimes you're there too soon. Now a run on first down is not going to get off the ground as they will get him behind the line of scrimmage for a loss of three. They try again with Lewis. He'll get about four here, down to the 43-yard line. Now, they struggled to get him rolling on the ground in the first half, and that's sort of continuing here in the third quarter. Yeah, but I don't think it's time to abandon the running game. I would say keep feeding the horse, and I believe he'll eventually reward them, especially as we get deeper in the game. Looking to throw, Jones. They'll complete this to Ingram, his tight end. Pass the 20! And he will take it on in for a giant touchdown. Evan Ingram, his first touchdown on the year, as his guys have cut the lead down to two. Boy, it's nice to have that big, reliable target you can go to. Each and every time. A lot of people see that position as a fall back. Throw it to them when all else fails. Not at all. This guy can make plays, and that's exactly what he just did. Yeah, play here for a touchdown. This is taken at the three. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. The offense now at the line, ready for their next drive. And the interception thrown in the red zone last time. We'll see if they can rebound. I just have to think the last thing he said as they went back out there was, don't do that again. What do you think? <laughs> What do you think? Yeah, I think that. I think that not only did he say that, but he also told us, let's put it in the end zone that it's supposed to be in, all right? The end zone we're trying to score. I know we're being a little bit facetious here, but the bottom line is take care of the football, and everything else should flow from there. Quick lesson, never ask the play-by-play -play guy a question. <laughs> hey, you're my partner. I know you're right there with me. They run again on first down, Peterson. That's over 40 yards of movement with those last two plays. Now, that was an excellent run. And when you see that happen, that's when you're seeing guys doing their job and then some people doing a little bit more. Offensive linemen and tight ends, they're expected to block. But the wide receivers, all they want to do is catch passes. So when they block on a big-time running play and create extra space, you've got to hit the jackpot there. Back now at FedEx Field. It's been a good one so far. Just a two-point game here as we get set for quarter number four. Second down now. It's Peterson. And he'll be a little shy of the 25 here at the 26-yard line. 
two yards, good enough for a first. I like a guy who understands the situation. I also like a guy who, who you look at him and you say, that looks like a guy who knows the coach is going to say, guess what? You drop this one, you'll be carrying around the training facility for an entire week. <laughs> Maybe flashback to high school or college, carrying it around campus, right? Maybe old gauntlet drill, right? Anyone get the ball out while he's, while he's sitting in class and bring it back to the coach? He's in big trouble. An ideal spot here to get a first down and try to run some more clock. And this is second and less than a yard. Now a handoff here to his running back. And he will be brought down at about the six-yard line. It's another 10 yards on that one and another first down. Brandon, sometimes it just comes down to the power of suggestion because I know exactly what they said all week long. We're coming off the open week. We'll have the fresher legs in the fourth quarter, and they will wilt when we get to that point. And right now, it appears that they're thinking that exact thing. Yeah, offensively, they had the bye last week. Defensively, did not. Is that really a big factor? Is that more talk during the week? I think the more that you talk about it, the more that you emphasize it, the more sometimes it comes true for your team. This drive's taking more than three minutes off the clock already as they come up on second down. They give to Peterson out of the gun. And a nice pick up there. He gets about five down to the four-yard line. I like that run right there, partner. Not the flashiest run, not the one that's going to break for big yardage, but he understands the situation. And taking care of the football, paramount, and he got it done. Nursing that slim lead, you're exactly right. Hold on to that ball. Now it's Haskins. This will be caught at about the six. And he takes it in. Touchdown, Washington. Lance Kendricks with touchdown number seven on the year. And his guys are going to add on to their lead. Now, there was no going through the progressions on that touchdown pass. Yeah, nor was it necessary. His receiver won that route early, presented himself. No reason to wait. Go ahead and put it on him and score a touchdown. Extra point good by Hopkins. And that makes this a nine-point game. Following the touchdown, here's Marr to kick it away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. The New York set to take the field. Jones and the Giants now with a first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. Jones from the gun, he'll throw. And he was hit as he threw it there, and it forces it incomplete. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. Here's Jones throwing again. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Off the edge, the sack by Matt Ioannidis. Offensively, they're going to have to figure this out before next week. Seven sacks in one game. Yeah, and that's more than any quarterback should have to bear. And if this continues on, there will be another quarterback in the game because no one can stand up to this week after week. Now the throw on third down, knocked away and incomplete. The coverage good that time by Kendall Fuller. Not only was the call spot on, how about the execution of that defense right there? The zone was absolutely locked up tight. He was trying to force it in there on third down. But if there's a time to force it, he felt like he needed to make a play, right? Yeah, exactly right. Third down, you got to try to find something. There's nothing available there for him. Out comes Washington's offense as they get set to take over here. Well, there are two scores on the plus side. Still time here in this fourth quarter, but maybe you start thinking about playing keep away? Yeah, I think here's the situation. You're not thinking touchdowns anymore. You're just thinking first downs to keep up with your theme there, playing keep away. First downs, they can't touch the ball. Now we've got a giant player here slow to get up after that last play. While the training staff takes a peek, we'll take a break. The run only got a yard. Here's second and nine. Another toe for the workhorse here this afternoon, Peterson. And he's going to have to protect the football and take his lumps here at this stage of the game as they stop him behind the line. Brandon, it's clearly a running situation when you're up in the fourth quarter. They're going to have to stack the box and make it difficult for them to move the ball. Made it very difficult right there. Now they need to repeat that effort. Yeah, bring seven, eight, nine, whatever it's going to take to slow them down. And this offense on third down today, they've converted four times out of six. Not bad. This is third and 11. 
Now a third down throw, but it misses the target incomplete. Critical play in this football game because if they pick up the first there, that clock keeps rolling. Has to be a little frustrating for them because they know that if they pick up a first down there and continue to eat away at the clock, really increases their chances of closing this one out. Now they're likely going to have to give the football up and sweat it out on the sideline. And now out come the Giants. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. But you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times the punter goes to the sideline, puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now from all the work he's getting. Here's a second and five now from the 25. Second and five. They'll get this one into the hands of Lewis. And they'll take him down at the 31-yard line. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. The start for them near flawless. Defense gets him a three and out. Two quick pass connections on offense. So that's how a team works together. Just what you described. Get him the ball, give him a little momentum. And they're capitalizing off of that. Thanks a lot, guys. Looking for more there on first down, but this throw downfield incomplete. Golden Tate, his intended receiver, and it's second down. Line of scrimmage, the 31 as they line up, second and 10. Throw left side, complete to Ingram. That catch good for only a yard, and it'll be third down. Brandon, perfect defense in this situation would have meant that there was an incompletion that would have picked it off. Okay, so they gave up the completion. But I really enjoyed watching how the defense stayed in sync, stayed in great communication. And as he dragged across each zone, you see him pointing, communicating. There he is, and they passed him off to each defender. Ended up making a nice play, even though it was complete. Well, he'd been targeted quite a bit on this drive, and finally, I think the guys on the defensive side they said no more. They slapped the double cover down and made it very tough for him to get the ball. He's going to let one fly for Tate. That's going to be knocked away and incomplete. The coverage good that time by Kendall Fuller. So they really needed points here in a two-score game. Could not come away with anything there on fourth. And while we know they're a little bit discouraged here, they can't check out of this game. You and I have called a good number of games over the course of our career where we've seen these types of situations. Teams get the ball back, and that miracle does occur. So they can't let that dream go just yet. They have to get stout on defense here. Yeah, right now, really hoping for a turnover. Now a run with Peterson. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. Now after the running play, we've got a man down on the field. While the trainers take a look, we'll step aside. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. Carry number 20 now for Peterson. And he'll take this one inside the 10, down to the 8. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. Second down, Peterson. And he'll be stopped just outside the five at the six. Just a couple on the ground there, and that's going to bring up third and about six. Brandon, we talk all the time about those hybrid players, guys who could do more than one thing. And I think if you're playing strong safety in the NFL today, you are a true hybrid. Part linebacker, part cover guy. And coming up, sticking his nose in the mess there and making a nice play defensively. It's a pickup of four, but they're still a yard short here with fourth down, fourth coming. So many things go into making a good play on defense. In this situation, just not being blown out of the way was a big start, and then a nice tackle to finish things off. So they settle for just the three, but clearly right now anything helps trying to salt this one away in the fourth. Without a doubt, obviously a touchdown probably would have been the final nail to finish this thing off, but it's still eight up time, gap points. So while it's not mission accomplished, it's darn close. The New York set to take the field. And on that last drive, went for it on fourth, turned it over. But good job by their defense, though. They held them to three, but this offense, they've got to be a little bit better, a little bit more careful here. And sometimes when you see these calls on fourth down, when they decide to go for it, it's not necessarily 
The coach saying, I believe in my offense. Sometimes the coach saying, I believe in my defense. I can afford to go for it here, because if we don't get it, I don't think we'll give up more than three. And that's exactly what happened there. you think there. that factored in? I do. I think that he had that in his mind going into the game, that I'm going to be aggressive on offense, because I know I've got a defense that can hold up their end. Here's a throw over the middle. It's taken in by his tight end. And they nearly get this all the way to midfield. Mark him down at the 49. The catch and run, good for 24 yards. Fourth quarter, every drive's so critical, and you figure they only get one more shot after this, so a touchdown's imperative on this drive. It is, but you also have to think to yourself in play calling, don't hold anything back. Don't save it for the second touchdown. You got the first one for the second one to even matter. Back to throw, Jones. A gain of four on the play, and that'll make this a second down. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers' tight ends because they're... And this is intercepted, and that should do it. Ruben Foster picks it, and they finally put it into this return, but not before he's all the way down to the 37. Down under two minutes to go in this football game. So it's our home team here in possession of the football as we come back. And no doubt what they're looking to do is just salt away the final couple of minutes and escape with a win. And now with 1.52 to go, we get another pause in the action, a timeout here defensively. So now they have to contend with second and 13 after the first down run goes backwards. Again, Peterson. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. Now the Giants will use the second of their three timeouts. And they'll be disappointed to have to burn one there after giving up the first down. And he'll give it here to his running back. And I think this defense knew what was coming as he is smothered behind the line. You'd have to think likely another running play coming here, second and 11. They'll go again with McKissick. He'll have a first down inside the 10. That one goes for 16 yards. It sets him up first and goal. I guess he was saving his best for last, so to speak. Longest run of the day coming here in the fourth quarter right there. And that type of run makes for a better night for him and his teammates, doesn't it? To be able to produce this late in the game can lead to some big smiles and satisfaction in the locker room after this one's over. It's second and goal, back to the eight-yard line now. Victory very much in sight now as they'll take a knee. Well, they need to reverse the trend. The last two plays have gone backwards. Now it's third and goal. Haskins down to a knee, and his guys about to come away victorious. So plenty of smiles for the folks here as they head for the exits. It's a victory for their hometown guys, and they were spurred on by a strong performance in that fourth quarter as they held their opponents off the scoreboard. Everyone wants to pitch a shutout for the entire game, but when you throw one in the fourth quarter, that tells everyone that you're getting stronger and dominance is starting to take over, right? The way that you close, the way that you finish, that gets preached to you from the time you're playing Little League football all the way up through and they closed them out with a big-time performance down the stretch. So for the home team here, the win means they'll finish the first half at a respectable 5-3 and three record. And they will hit the road next week to take on the Detroit Lions. Meanwhile, for the Giants, the difficult season continues as they drop to 1-8. and eight, And they'll get a chance to redeem themselves at home next week. And for Charles Davis and our entire crew, I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports.